Hey, welcome to the second COVID cast. It's me, Brian Miller, here with our producer, Dallin Wright. Hey, how's it going? In case you didn't hear part one, the purpose of this is to provide an insight, a practice, a perspective that you can use to help maintain your health and sanity for yourself and those who love you and whom you love and those who depend on you or you're responsible for. That's part of it. And then to explore things that are giving us hope. Somebody that I was talking to or something I read said, this might have been you, Dallin, that every day feels like a week and every week feels like a month or a year right now. It's amazing how much is going on and how fast things are changing. What was it like a week ago? It was a different experience that we were all having. Totally different. The perspective that I want to share today is one about love. And again, this content is coming from the School for Good Living's Life's Best Practices curriculum, something I created to help me live a life I love, a life of happiness, meaning, and contribution. But where we start is the idea that love is a decision, an attitude, and a practice. Love is not a feeling. And especially now, where many of us have made the decision, some of us have been ordered to stay at home in some version of a shelter in place, a self-isolation, a quarantine. And that's fun until it's not. And that works until it doesn't. And even the people you love can sometimes get on your nerve. I remember one teacher I had who once uh, suggested that, yes, it's possible to love and hate someone at the same time. You might have experienced that. You might be experiencing that right now. How can we be loving if we want to be? How can we be kind? How can we be patient? How can we be understanding even when we don't feel like it? Dallin, I didn't work from home regularly, and now I am, and you already did, and now some of your routines have been disrupted, like probably everyone who's hearing this now. But this idea of love as a choice, as a decision, as an attitude, and a practice Say I make that decision, I accept what Brian is saying, that love is not a feeling or it's not just a feeling. But why does that matter? I would submit to you that it matters because there are times when you won't feel like you want to be kind. You won't feel like you want to act lovingly towards someone you love. And part of what opens up here is when you stop believing that love is something that you do when you feel it it then becomes something that's available to you even when you don't feel it. And what better place to practice than at home with those you love? Many of us think about doing something wonderful, something magnificent, doing great work, serving large numbers of people, making a difference. But if you can't do that with those who you probably love the most or quote unquote are supposed to love the most, What hope do you have in the broader world? Our families often get the brunt of our bad sides. We come home from work. We haven't been able to, or we haven't felt like we've been able to share our feelings in uh, in a way we wanted to. But here's our family. Here's our spouse. And we let it out. We let it out in a way that we wouldn't do it in an office. And we wouldn't, maybe wouldn't do it with a coworker. We wouldn't do it with somebody in a restaurant. But in our home, we just, we let it out. Let's turn to the next part of these COVID casts, which is what is giving you hope. As I was out and about shopping for a freezer this afternoon, the last one in the state of Utah, as far as I could tell, that was available new at a Lowe's or a Home Depot, which I found very grateful for. I got a little notification on my Apple Watch while I was standing in in line at the store that told me that the United States has just surpassed China as the highest number of confirmed cases of COVID. So that's not what's giving me hope. But what is giving me hope, there's there's two things that I want to share. The first one is an article that was written by a science writer and a journalist who writes for The Atlantic Magazine named Ed Yong. Ed has written a very thorough and a very thoughtful article called How the Pandemic Will End. The subheadline is the U.S. may end up with the worst COVID-19 outbreak in the industrialized world. 
that's done. <laughs> this was just published yesterday. That's already true. This is how it's going to play out. But what is giving me hope about this article, there's one thing in it that talks about the fact that this virus isn't a mutant. It didn't come from outer space. It's not something we've never seen before. It doesn't seem to be mutating very rapidly. And what all of that amounts to is that there's no reason we won't find a vaccine for this or created or maybe antiviral drugs that might preempt getting it. So although, yes, that's going to take some time for us to develop that and to test that and to deploy that, that it will happen, that it's a virtual certainty that that will happen. And as that happens, part of what will happen is there will be a new normal established. So that's part of what is giving me hope. Dallin, what's giving you hope right now? I also read an article, and it was later in the day, it was right before we got on, and it was that Dyson has gotten into the ventilator business. It made me feel excited that a company can take something that they totally weren't doing to focus some efforts on it and say, here's a final machine that we believe we can manufacture quickly, and as long as we get the permissions, get it tested and all this – is that we can ramp up and put this out. And it's just one of the stories of companies that are doing this. And that that spirit of getting out there and attacking a problem and saying, here's the solution we've come up with, I love that. I don't have those skills, but I'm sure glad that we do have those people. And as you point out, Dyson is very well known and respected and capable of doing some amazing things, but he's certainly not the only one, right? As you pointed out, there's many, 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 many people doing many amazing things. Yes. Speaking of ventilators, that gives me hope is this article that Tim Ferriss included in his recent Seven Bullet Saturday called Emergency Technique, How to Increase Ventilator Capacity Two to Four Times in 10 Minutes. He says this describes last resort modifications to ventilators that can enable one ventilator to service two or four people instead of one. So again, this resourcefulness, this creativity, this overcome, adapt, innovate, survive at all costs, and to share what we know. I don't know if you've experienced this, but this willingness to share and this willingness to to be kind, just in my limited interactions with people as I moved carefully around the valley, visited the grocery store, went and bought this freezer, talked to people on the phone that people seem to me to be very conscientious, very kind, very patient. And although this situation is bringing up a lot of hardship, it's surfacing a lot of challenges for us, it also seems to be bringing out the best in us. We'll conclude this with one practice, something you can do. As you listen and you consider that love is a decision. It's an attitude. It's a practice. Something that's available to you all the time, even when you don't feel it. Even when it's something you don't want to do. If it's a choice you've made to be a loving person, the way I see it, that choice transcends circumstances. That choice transcends events. It's not dependent on the way someone behaves, on what they do or what they don't do who they are or who they're not. That's easy to say in the abstract, but think about the people in your home. Maybe the person you've chosen to have a committed relationship with. Maybe you've chosen to marry. Maybe you've chosen to make children with them. That you've moved in together. This is your life. You can live your whole life thinking the next relationship will be better. Next time I'll get it right. You can imagine what it would be like to be with a different partner or how much better someone in the past was. But the reality is, now is all there ever is. And this is your opportunity to experience, to grow, and to love. So the invitation to you in the practice is, first of all, to cultivate an awareness. And to realize that you won't always feel loving. You don't always feel anything. Feelings come and go. They're transitory. It's part of what makes them feelings. But the practice is to be aware of that is to be present to that in a moment of conversation or what might be a confrontation, a discussion, an argument, a negotiation, to find some alone time, 
some time to just be by yourself. You can do it in 30 seconds, in 60 seconds. You can do it as you're falling asleep. And to just observe without any kind of judgment, without even trying to make anything different. See, one of the things that's remarkable to me is that human behavior, changing human behavior from one perspective seems incredibly difficult. From another perspective, it's as simple as making a choice. So when you take that time, when you're in stillness, when you're in silence, when you're in solitude, no matter how fleeting it is and you're reflecting on this circumstance that you find yourself in, one invitation is to look consciously for the good. What can you be grateful for? How is this circumstance, this situation, this relationship calling you to be a better version of yourself? How is this person who seems to be a problem showing you what the world wants to see from you, the best version of yourself, the most steady, the most patient, the most understanding, the most tolerant, the wisest, kindest person. What can you be grateful for about the situation? And then with that, imagining, especially if there was an episode where you said or did something that you wish you hadn't, if you could go back and do it differently, just doing a little mental replay what would you have done instead? And then don't worry about it, just let it go. But having done that simple visualization will give you an opportunity as a similar situation unfolds next time that perhaps you make choices more in line with that. And that's it. The final thing is to realize that every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. And as you're falling asleep, recognizing if you're lucky, you'll wake up and you'll have another day tomorrow. And that day tomorrow is an opportunity to practice being the kind of person that you saw yourself as in that visualization. And then finally, not to beat yourself up when you are aware, when you're experiencing that gap between feeling loving and acting loving. It's a practice. That's why I say it's first a decision, second an attitude, and third, it's a practice. So with that, with whatever you're dealing with, however life is going for you, wondering how it's gonna turn out, well, guess what? This is it. It's turned out. Now is all there ever is. And this is your perfect opportunity to practice being loving. But nobody's going to make you. It's just a choice that you get to make if you want to. Good luck.